Beyond social distancing, hand washing, and staying home, is there anything else we can do to prevent getting COVID-19? Dr. Isles says lupus patients may hold the answer, and he joins us now via Skype. Good morning to you, Dr. Isles. Thanks for being here. Good morning. It is a fascinating and tantalizing lead. Yeah, exactly. I'll tell you what, uh, before we dive into your take on hydroxychloroquine here, I want to get your thoughts on what's happening in New York. The daily death toll plateaued a bit there. Is that a good sign? I mean, we're looking for any glimmer of hope here, Doc. Although it's a very good sign, and I'm, you know, we're in the front lines. I can tell you what's happening in our ICUs is we're not seeing more patients than last week. We're not seeing less, but we're not seeing more, which means we think we may reach the summit of this. Uh, because we're having more success keeping people alive, there's more people in the ICU. So some of those numbers are misleading. we got to take a whole new class of patients this week. If we can get past this week without running out of some of the key uh, the, the products that we need, like ventilators, and I'm optimistic we will because we've been getting more and more of those from uh, the state and federal government, then I think next week we might have a stable week and then hopefully a decline after that. Let's talk about hydroxychloroquine. We've been hearing a lot about how promising this is to stop coronavirus from the president. And there has been those awkward moments between him and Dr. Fauci during their media briefings on the effectiveness of this. But what are your thoughts on it? I'm just going to share the data with you. It, it's it's un incontrovertible. Everyone keeps saying it's anecdotal. That's just the wrong word. Anecdotal means, uh, you know, I tried it, it worked for me, maybe it might work for you. I talked to Didier Raoult, the famous French infectious disease specialist. He has a thousand patients now in his trial, case series patients that have been enrolled using hydroxychloroquine plus the antibiotic z pack with seven of those patients who were hospitalized dying and 20 going to the ICU. Those are pretty good numbers. And there's also a randomized trial, the gold standard version of how you look at this from China. It was small but clinically significant and statistically significant, which means it's highly unlikely to be random chance, less fever, less cough, and less pneumonia problems. So these are all things you want to see. I do, and most doctors in the world, this is their number one choice for medic of products you recommend. It's not proven. It also is very safe. I don't know where all these rumors started that it's not safe. You talk to the rheumatologists, and I have one of them on my show today, uh, talk, saying that we've used these drugs for decades, billion prescriptions probably around the world, it's just not a dangerous drug. There's no, there's not even a protocol to prescribe it because it's so safe when used by itself. So doctors should be talking to their patients without a lot of people interfering about the only real tool that most of us feel we can comfortably prescribe widely. As we get more ideas, it can be replaced. But in the meantime, you, you go to war with the army you have. You know, I read that French study, and I know that the sample size was small, but now these sampling sizes are getting much larger. Is that further proof that this could be something that works? I think so. When I spoke to uh, Dr. Elt, and yeah, this guy is world famous for a bunch of his inventions. He's got pretty good instincts on this stuff. Um, and in his, in his part of France, they have a better result than other parts, he says. But to have a thousand patients come in and call that anecdotal, I mean, please, it's just, it's not the right word. You're tracking all these patients and learning about what's happening in them, their viral load, how likely they are to develop complications. And it's not a panacea, right? There's no gold. Uh, there's no gold standard yet for treatment. But in the absence of concrete, hardcore, large clinical trials, there's enough data that most physicians feel comfortable with this. Has the president or his administration reached out to you about this? No, I haven't been talking to them about, I mean, I'm, try, I'm focused on asking questions and making sure we find solutions. I'm sure they have lots of people advising them. And Dr. Fauci is iconic in our space. Right. And, and respect that he has a very clear goal, which I think is appropriate, of making sure large trials are, are conducted. But on the front lines, where we're taking care of patients, we have an obligation to make decisions. Let's talk about ShareCare, your, your own sister company. What have you learned regarding the analysis regarding COVID-19 patients using hydroxychloroquine? So part of the interesting observation that Chinese made was their patients who had lupus and therefore were on hydroxychloroquine, the medication to treat it, weren't developing COVID-19. And likewise, the people who came to the hospital with COVID-19 didn't have lupus with hydroxychloroquine medication. So we've started we've running data on large group blocks of data. We have four, uh, sorry, uh, 9 million Americans records now looked at. 14,000 people uh, are on hydroxychloroquine chronically. Zero of those patients have developed COVID-19. None. Now, it doesn't prove anything yet because it's too small sample size. But we're working now with CMS, which is Medicare, 40 million records there. And all the blues, the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association is giving us their 60 million records. So I'm hoping that we can, by getting everyone to work together, get maybe 100 million records to quickly look at. And over the course of, a, you know, a week or two, maybe get some, at least an idea about whether there's a possibility that hydroxychloroquine may prevent 
the infection from being transferred. Then we can start maybe using it for healthcare workers on the front line, the spouses of people who've already become COVID-19 positive to reduce the, the, the disease burden in the country. Let's hope that happens sooner than later. All right, Dr. Ross, thanks so much for your time. We look forward to your show. You're doing a great job answering a lot of our questions, and we have your show airing right here on The CW tonight at 6 p.m. Take care. Thanks again for your time.